Rural Heritage on RFD TV is brought to you by Rural Heritage Magazine, a bi monthly magazine featuring articles about farming and logging with draft animal power, small scale diversified family farming and homesteading, and other aspects of our rich rural heritage. Rural Heritage Magazine, borrowing from yesterday to do the work of today. For subscription information, please call 319 362 3027 or order online at www.ruralheritage.com. Today we're going back to Kelowna, Iowa to continue our tour of the Village Museum located there. Today we're going to see an old style Amish grandpa house, a buggy shop, line shaft building, and collection of vintage farming implements and vehicles. We'll also spend a little time looking at a unique collection of display cabinets used to show sewing threads in general stores a century or more ago. This is our loom house. Um, so we've had a couple different ladies that have come in here and the, the lady that we have currently right now does a phenomenal job. This to me I think is kind of a lost art, um, but this is her little playhouse. Um, she comes in here and is just happy as a lark. She cards the wool and all the way oh, up to looming. Yeah. Well, no, she doesn't card the wool. Okay. But she has she, she's very particular about who and where she gets the wool from. She has specific friends. What I like about what she does here is look at all the vibrant colors yeah. that she uses. Wool doesn't have to be just plain colored. Yeah. Um, so she and then every single so she spent oh, probably close to three years. We redid this building um, last year. Um, the floor was caving in, so we actually filled it in with cement. It's now at least a solid floor, um, but these two looms are original looms. They go back to the um, uh, late 1800s, early 1900s, and then she's gotten it where every spinning wheel that's on this property that you see. So even the one down in the log cabin, they're all full functioning. Um, but they all work a little in a little bit in different ways. One thing that she did do is she, um, we did some videos, kind of we did that during COVID and you can scan these QR codes and it'll, yeah. give, it'll give you a different demonstration as to how each um, wheel works. So what she makes here, whether it's a scarf or, um, a runner or whatever she does then sell um, in the gift shop but unbelievable how she does it she makes it look so easy men are the ones that were the weavers back okay. in the day okay. um, there were traveling salesmen that basically hauled one of those big looms to a town they set it up and then they sold the coverlet They're, those are called coverlets that they do and um, I can give you an example of one of those when we go into the quilt gallery. Okay. Um, but they would stay within the towns, they would take orders, they would make all of the coverlets up for the people. And then when they were done in that town, they moved on. And it was kind of a short lived period of time that they did it. But all of those, those traveling salesmen were men, not women. Um, but there were a lot of ladies that had um, loom houses on their farms okay. so you'll find little buildings like this on different farms and that's what they did is they went out and they spun and wove um you know to pass the time so this particular building is it was not originally a grandpa house it was actually um kind of a wash house summer kitchen okay. we converted it in it's an original building um that uh, that dates like 1890s, but we we turn it into a grandpa house. Um, there are a lot of people that come to our community that have no idea what a grandpa grandma house even is, and so we wanted to represent that as a part of the Amish. Granted, I think that grandpa grandpa houses are a lot more bigger and elaborate than these little ones sure. that you would have seen in the earlier days. Sure. But um, we do try to tell the story that um, the Amish take care of their own. You right. know, we're, we're used to either sending our, our, our folks, grandparents to the nursing homes. The Amish don't believe in nursing homes. Um, we, uh, we just recently got a few pieces donated in here. That's that other Hoosier I was kind of telling you about. Um, 
this dry sink yeah. supposedly came out of an Amish uh, house. It's pretty neat, I it think. Really yeah, but, beautiful. but you know, even today, you got a lot of people that they don't want a lot of space. They don't need a lot of space. Right. And, and so um, it kind of is funny how, you know, something that, you know, we wanted big, but now everybody's going back to, to little. Yeah. But yeah, some, you know, you still kind of go out past some of the Amish farms and they'll, they'll have smaller buildings like this. Sure. So now this is an original buggy barn. It's called the Miller's Buggy Barn. A local uh, person built it in 1929. And um, when the, f the family no longer wanted it, it got moved into here. Um, they would build the buggies down below and then there's doors up above. They would hoist the buggies up to the second floor where they would paint them so i would assume they would probably have even something similar to like a hay trolley that would come out in order to pick them up so sure, sure. so this is to me definitely a, a historical local piece so it was uh restored and brought in in 1979. that buggy just fits well I don't know that they necessarily worked on Amish, Amish buggies, buggies. Right, right. so we do have another, we have a potential donor that has a smaller buggy sure. that we're hoping that that maybe we could put in here and get the Amish buggy out. Sure. Um, but yes, in order to get the buggy in and out, you have to get people in it in order to lower <laughs> it down to get it out the door. So now the line shaft building. To me, this is pretty cool. I don't, I mean, I, I don't understand a lot of the connectors and all of that. And I can open up this other door. Um, but it was built in the 1880s. Um, it's pegs, put together with pegs. Um, we do run this during fall festival. Um, they do grind corn during festival. But just, you know, definitely interesting on how all of the pulleys, everything's got a purpose and a reason. Now they do run a tractor out the door sure. and hook a belt to that. So then the tractor sits here and sure. runs that belt that runs everything else inside. Yeah. But I think this is just structure wise is a cool. Yeah, it really is. Cool building. Yeah. The water toner and the windmill, I don't have a lot of historical information on them. They, they are a local, our local pieces. Um, I think they're That's both terrific. pretty cool. Really we did, we have noticed that our water tower is leaning. Yep. So now we got to figure out what kind of concept we want to use to straighten that. My my thoughts were is have somebody come in to lift the whole thing up and Shore pour a underneath. cement pad underneath. And then somebody else suggested the other day at our board meeting to shim it. And I looked at him and I said, oh, okay, so shim it so you can fix it now. And then when you're all dead and I'm still here, right, right. I'm going to have to lift it to put a cement pad underneath right. it. But yeah, it's kind of leaning towards the south. and. I, I don't know. I just say that the ground that it's sitting on is settling. and um, But this, there is actual water that can be pumped out of this. Um, really? Yes. It goes down to groundwater. Yeah, there's like a cistern right there. Awesome. And I know back during Fall Festival in the old days, we had a gentleman that um, worked the old-fashioned dog treadmill that you'll see in the Mennonite Museum. And so they'd have water coming out of that and into the bucket and the dog would walk the treadmill yeah. and it all was connected together. We now have four volumes of America's Rural Yesterday books with photos of farm life a hundred years ago. 
Field work has images of horses in the fields working the ground, planting, and harvesting the crop. Barn and farmyard shows farmers putting that crop in the barn, silo, or corn crib and caring for poultry, hogs, cattle, and more. In At Home and in Town, farm families prepare Sunday dinner, relax in the parlor, drive to town by buggy or wagon, and visit the general store. Finally, Early Tractors has over 250 photos of early American tractors like Alice Chalmers, Oliver, John Deere, Farmall, Minneapolis Moline, and many more. These photos are of new tractors back in the day and show how they were configured coming out of the factory. Buy any of these books for $24.95 plus shipping. When you buy two or more, the price per book goes down, all the way to $17.49 per book when you buy all four. To order, just call 1-877-647-2452 or order online at www.ruralheritage.com. That's 877-647-2452. Now, when we go into this pole building, I know there's some people in here. Um, there isn't a significant story. It's it's kind it's a of collection. It's a it, hodgepodge. It, it is. Yeah. It's definitely yeah. hodgepodge. There are a few significant pieces right, right. here. Is what I was wanting you to see. Yeah, it's amazing. Um, and I know at one time. The gals had counted these, and I think there's over 700 padlocks. They had. Now, I guess there were some people that were from a different company um, that were out here checking all of these out. Um, they spent a lot of time looking at, but this is to me a part of Glenn's whatnots. It's amazing. Because these are dog tags and stuff, and. Right. He did. He just collected different things like that. Well, we're awful grateful people do that. Without it, we wouldn't have the stuff. Now, pieces in here that pertain specifically to Kelowna, well, they all probably are part of Kelowna, but ones. So, <laughs> when they put this wagon away, it should have been facing the other way. We just acquired this last. Oh, it's got writing on it? It does. Okay. Um, so we piece this to Snare, Allen and Snare Hardware, and then it says Kelowna, sure. Iowa on it. Sure does. So this wagon was built in Fairfield. Okay. And they would have put it on the train. And um, it would have gone to Allen and Snare Hardware, which is right here. So that would be where Yachty's Hardware is downtown. It would have been painted red and green, because if you look underneath, it's still got the original paint over yep, here. Right, right. And um, we got this uh, off an Amish auction. And we had a couple donors that helped us purchase this. And uh, from what the boys told us, that it would basically I can't even remember what they used it for. Because if you look in the back, it, yeah, it, it's got this on it. Right. And they would use it, you know, during harvest. And then it would go back into the barn. So, you know, this is over a 100-year-old wagon. And it's just, to me, in wonderful shape. Now, of course, you know, we could restore this it. This isn't 100 years old. That it, but this would be. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Absolutely. Well, this probably makes it so what they had inside worked or whatever. Sure, I'm not sure, a. Sure, sure. No, it's a beauty. So we were pretty excited to get that. It's just, and of course, this is another goal. This is another goal on the list is to take this building and possibly um, have Century Farms or older represented. Oh, yeah, this is pretty awesome. Yeah, it's a great so grader. we had a salesman sample in the new building of a road grader that was pulled by um, mules or draft horses. But here's your heavy thing. I can't even fathom pulling that thing down the road. Yeah. Kind of crazy, I think. <laughs> um, yeah, so like, like I said, down the road, we'd kind of like to have this building tell more of a story. Sure. Um, otherwise, right now it is. It's just kind of a collection of different yeah. different pieces that were pretty. But they're all being preserved. I mean, it's in a fairly climate controlled. Yeah, region. the only uh, time these things get pulled out is during our fall festival, because then we fill this building with um, vendors and stuff. Um, 
but like this piece off to your right is just huge. The threshold yes, be and and I know they've had this all hooked up sure. before. Some years they would do that. Other years, if they didn't have the sure. manpower to do it, um, original fire truck that that was on the Kelowna Fire Department. Um, I don't know why I want to say like. 1950s maybe ish so yeah I mean I guess you figure this is 70 years old now um, I just it amazes me even the Amish today how they can deal with the steel wheel stuff some of that stuff has to be so heavy I laugh when I see a, a lawnmower with steel wheels now coming around here don't clip your head on this now what I this shaker box I think is cool now they've yes, really they've it's had that fun. thing moving um, during fall festival yeah, where no, they'll hook it I've up never, to, I've never seen one of these before yeah they'll hook it up to the line shaft building yeah. and it'll shake it But you know, it's funny because every time they pull this stuff out, everything goes in in a different way. I think they've tried mapping it out. The Mennonite Museum's kind of responsible for this building and when we empty it, the guys come in with their tractors and stuff. But yeah, they've tried mapping this thing out and, and uh, nothing ever comes back in the same except for the main pieces that go down the center of the building. Um, that wood beam plow is really rare. It's is it? Beam, the, yeah, the big beam. This one in the front? Yeah. Yeah, because we were just out here looking, trying to find things that would maybe go into our new exhibit hardware store, and but we need them to be smaller pieces, and I didn't know if yeah, yeah. the hardware store would sell smaller sized plows, but okay, that's good to know right. that that's... They, they would probably order that. If you enjoy watching our programs about draft horse farming, plow days, harvest fairs, wagon trains, or horse logging, you'll be interested to learn we've taken some of our best shows and put them on a series of compilation DVDs. Each DVD has at least four full episodes of similar themes with a dozen titles to choose from. There's Draft Animal Farming, Volumes 1 and 2, Heritage Festivals, Volumes 1 through 3, horse logging, wagon trains, and much more. They cost $29.95 each, or two for $49.95, three for $59.95, or as low as $13.99 each when you order five or more. Ask for a catalog or place your order by calling 1-877-647-2452 or visit our bookstore at ruralheritage.com. That's 1-877-647-2452 or ruralheritage.com. This is a private collection um, donated by a local gentleman. He actually um, owns one of the original Five and Dime stores, which is kind of ironic that he started collecting these because that's these were in you know your general stores back in yeah. the day. And I think these date, um, 1880. like 1880s to 1915 is, is kind of the general dating of these. It's so wonderful that they survived because you can picture somebody thinking, well, we can use this for this, that, or the other thing. I know that he had several that he found that were literally in a farmer's machine shed because the farmers would use them for tools painted John Deere green that he'd strip the John Deere green paint off to find the original label on the side this piece over here is kind of a nice piece it's a coin operated one supposedly kind of a unique piece so you turn this up here you'd have a variety of colors and then it cost a nickel Wow. to get so that that particular piece was actually um found in an auction uh up in des moines quite a few years ago 
Now the other, the other piece is um, he did some restoration. I know that this inlaid maple is not something that you can really replicate unless you're really, really good. Um, this is like more of a floss cabinet, so sometimes they, they varied on having tin in them, but that's another maple one. Yeah, if you ever want to do a story on these, this is a story all in itself. So yeah, so basically he would um, find a piece, he would restore it, and then at his um, store, he would have them on display above the fabric department. So when they had the fire, all of the cabinets were saved. They had to be kind of um, refurbished from the water damage that they had. And then he continued to restore for a number of years. So like this, this back panel is a restored panel. Um, you know, he would redo the lettering. He kind of perfected it. So a lot of it, you can't even tell that it's um, been redone. But, but if you look at an original, this is an original piece but like he would be a replica sure, right, right. but not but you know not not no, not too bad yeah, right, exactly. he took a lot of a lot of pride in As in a that of fact the spacing of the letters here is a little bit better than mm -hmm. he had friends and he had an Amish man that helped him do like those press board backs and um he just had connections all over he had a really really super good friend that actually this cylinder right here um, a lot of people would rip these cylinders out and then use it as a display case right, right. so his friend replicated that cylinder wow. so there were single there's single double and triple cylinder cabinets so you'd have the the triples you know about this big with three different cylinders in it but to so after his friend passed away that did a lot of his wood woodworking um he kind of backed off on doing sure. stuff because he he literally had a cabinet i can't remember how many drawers were i mean it was lots and lots it was like yay high and it came in a box it looked like kindling and his friend pieced that thing back together you know but they had a passion for that right right yeah but you know, fine details like this, these little metal pieces, there's like a, a butterfly, yeah. Yeah, yeah. a butterfly there. Right. Um, the cat, the cat was a big symbol. Um, I don't know if I even can see a piece. But no, they were clearly showcase pieces. They, they weren't just utility. So here, well, th this is a, a perfect picture. This is a picture of an old general store. Oh and right there's a cylinder. Yeah. And I know that's something I just can't, sure. if I got a magnifying glass, but that would be an example. They would put it on the, ca the counters and then the women would come in and shop what they needed to out of those cabinets. So these are point of sale display pieces that the manufacturer of the threads would basically give yes. the general store. Yes. So, so if, you placed an, if you placed an order, um, then they in turn would send you a cabinet. A lot, now a lot of the thread companies were from um, Europe. Okay. The early on ones. And so, yeah, then they would, so they, they said that they had completely separate um, warehouses or whatever that they were doing nothing but assembling spool cabinets wow. to then send along to sell their threads out of. But then, you know, it, adver it advertised them. So this is Amer right, this is Americ's yeah. and it, you know, yeah, it specific. increased their sales. Yep. So it made perfect sense. Yep. And they were built to last. Yep. Oh, gosh, yeah. This program is available for purchase. To order your copy, please call 319-362-3027 or visit www.ruralheritage.com. Rural Heritage is a bi-monthly magazine dedicated to draft animal farming and logging as well as other aspects of our rich rural heritage. It is published by Mishka Press, which also offers a complete line of back-to-the-land books, DVDs, and calendars. Call or write for a catalog or subscription information. Or visit our website at www.ruralheritage.com.